Hi everybody, this is Tech for Humans today, and today we are going to be covering some design basics uh, for video games, uh, and particularly games in general. Now, what's important to keep in mind about games, all games have phases of play, and phases of play are not so much what are built into the rules of games or what happen in video games, but it's what happens in your head when you play. And the mechanics inside of the games are what make you do this, right? And if the game doesn't make you do this, it's not really a game. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, the basic phases of play are observation, evaluation, planning, and action. Now, observation and evaluation are actually two different steps, but they take place back to back, um, and they are similar enough that I usually lump them into one category when I'm initially explaining it, because threes are just easier to remember. So, observation, evaluation. When you first enter an area in a video game, the first thing you do is, what's my condition? What's my environment? Based on what's in your environment, you might ask, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Are there any opportunities? Um, what are the biggest threats? In the business world, what are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and biggest threats? It's called a SWOT analysis. It's actually used for business for uh, decision making and all that stuff. So this is like some serious science here, right? So taking into account the SWOT, you enter the planning phase, which is simply, what should I do? Commonly, in most video games and, well, tabletop games, this usually is uh, move, select tools, and recheck your plan. And then sometimes you wait for the moment to act, right? You may have a plan and just be sitting on it for a little bit, biding your time. Uh, it totally depends. After that, you enter the action phase, which is actually executing your plan. In tabletop games, this comes down to usually a roll of the dice, a spin of the wheel, randomly grabbing stuff from the bag. You don't know. You put together your best plan, and randomness somewhat decides if it's going to work or not. In video games, this all comes down to skill. How well do you actually execute what it is you're trying to do? Uh, and it's to me, that's the biggest difference between a video game uh, and a tabletop game, is they are both games. They both involve decision making, but it's the skill with which you execute your plan that is the chief difference. The other one is usually just a roll of the dice. After your action mode, you enter or re-enter evaluation observation mode. How did that go? Did it work? What will I do differently next time, right? So it's really a simple thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. First thing we're gonna look at is Batman Arkham City. So in this is first example, I'm honing in on a group of thugs on a rooftop, um, and I stop and I observe, and I go, okay, one of them is holding a yellow bat. This 3D view lets me see everything, where all the guys are, um, and it gives me an overview of my choices. Now he's off by himself, and I want to go through and get him. Now I'm going to get him, and that's fine, but I'm also going to be very bad in my execution of maneuvering around here. I actually get hung up in the plane, and when I enter into my evaluation stage, um, that one of the things that I'm going to say to myself is, hey, I need to be better at flapping around and being Batman. Okay, so here I'm again planning, I'm evaluating, I'm going to leap into action. Going, here I'm just going to essentially start taking these guys out. Now, I'm again, I'm evaluating, I'm planning, I'm switching out my gear, getting ready, and chicken. spring into action. And again, this all comes down to skill and execution. But even within this action phase, I'm still planning and evaluating. Every time you see me shift my camera around, I'm, I'm re-evaluating the battlefield, I'm planning my next move, I'm responding to threats here, I'm changing the situation, I'm making sure they can't see and I can. Right. It's easy to take out a guy, respond. Now it's important that I pay attention to the icons above their head. You'll notice that they have stars, they're stunned. If they have those uh, blue spikes, they're about to attack. And if I don't respond appropriately in time, like I do here, I take a hit. Okay. 
Now, it's going to, when I finish this guy off, it's going to give me a wrap up in the upper left hand corner. Right, max combo, XP amounts, right? It's all about consolidation and evaluation. Here, I evaluate again, I have nowhere to go, and I move on. In this example, they're teaching me about knives, and I'm going to bypass this using my shotgun. But they're trying to teach me how um, to essentially avoid knife weapons. Okay. But I evaluated my threat, I made a plan of action, and bypassed even what they intended for me to do. And now he's just a regular guy with fists, and I take him out just like you'd expect. Again, we'll see the wrap up. All right, now in this example, my environment has changed. I'm evaluating. I have an, a thing in my HUD that lets me um, uh, detect where Penguin's little scanner jammer is. But I want you to notice that there are weapons that these guys have, but they have a gun chest. And this gun chest allows them to shoot me. Now, now responding to you know, fire projectile weapons is really important for me. So you'll notice that every time that alarm goes off, wah, 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 you'll see me deal with the threat immediately because it's my highest priority. So we're running through that observation, plan, action loop really fast in this combat mode. Again, every time you see the camera shift, I'm reevaluating the field. Oh, there's that alarm. Dealt with. Alarm. Dealt with. Right. So I'm planning and reacting to the stimuli around me. And those are phases of play. That's what's happening in my head. I see. I plan. I act. I see. And the wrap-up. And here it's just a matter of destroying these transmitters, like so. This next example is Hitman, and it's similar to Batman, but different in a couple of key ways. With Hitman, you almost always want to remain hidden. This is all about the sneak up and the surprise. So this is another perfect example of that observation, evaluation, um, planning, and action step. So here, we're observing our environment. Um, it's giving us information about the environment directly, and it's telling us, hey, you know, going down the street is bad. Now, if I was dressed as anything other than a cop, this level would be a lot harder. But I see that I am dressed as a cop. I know that I can more or less sneak around a little bit. If I get too close, you'll see these yellow arcs appear that start to lengthen out and become, you know, white to red. If they become full red, they'll recognize me and I'll have to deal with the threat. I have that same detective mode, I can see through walls, and I can see these individual cops and all the important playing pieces that give me hints, up to and including these uh, yellow expanding circles around areas that let me uh, manipulate my environment or otherwise affect the artificial intelligence. In this case, I'm not going to go through the window, I'm not going to fall to the ground, I'm going to go across this ledge here, climb down and just boldly walk my way in through the door. And here you can see I'm going into my uh, instinct mode to kind of make it so that these cops, like they see me as a cop, but they're like, do I know that guy? And you know, no, they don't. You also notice that there are fire trails on the ground. Those are telling you where the artificial intelligence agents are actually going to be headed. So it's just another playing piece, another piece of information for me to observe and understand my surroundings so that I can make decisions, so that I can plan and act. In this case, to make it the rest of the way out easily, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a store clerk outfit. Go ahead and just reset my checkpoint. Look at that steak. So 
so this first part is really really quiet i haven't attacked anyone i haven't shot anyone i haven't done anything i haven't even really looked at my weapons because i don't have to i use the environment around me to remain hidden that's the whole point of this game you actually lose points uh the more that you kill or attack here i'm hiding in plain sight it re refreshes my um, instinct bar down the lower right hand corner they are actually talking about me and i'm right there so i'm hiding in plain sight this is a game all about being sneaky. No, I haven't seen anyone that looks like that. Sorry. He even looks at me. What a bad cop. Moving on, I'm really just trying to sneak my way out. And here I actually have to watch out for store employees because if I'm dressed in their uniform, they'll go, hey, I don't know him. Who is he? Uh, can you please get out of my face? I guess I could. So, without firing a single shot, without killing a single person, I've exited the area, which is a really unique feature to Hitman. Um, and in this scenario, it's actually a very different ball game. I do actively have to kill people. I have targets. I have three of them, and they're going to be hidden out in a crowd, and I have to actually sneak through the crowd and I can't get too close to these guys because they will notice that I'm there so I can't just kill them out in a crowd I have to arrange a circumstance in which I can get to them individually now, I'm only going to show one example in this case um, but I feel like it's it's a pretty good example so here's the crowd there's my targets right? They're outlining the major pieces I'm able to sit down and plan I need to stay away from them so I head left now, I'm looking for those little pulsing yellow circles. And those tell me things that I can do, things that I can affect, an opportunity that I can explore and exploit uh, in order to take out my targets. Now, in this particular case, my weapons are pretty much a shotgun and a garrot wire. I think maybe I have a handgun. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm looking for different weapons. Uh, maybe a different outfit to be help me be a little bit less conspicuous if I can help it. So I go down into the stairwell, and I'm going to switch out for a sledgehammer just because, I don't know, it's a bit more refined than a steel pipe. It's not like we're playing Clue here. I'm going to run through this vent. Now this vent has an important feature. As I'm crawling through it, it allows me to look to the right and see that there's a weapon cache and a guard right there. Guard, weapon cache. Alright. We're going to move through. Now I need to take out that guard as fast as I can, as quietly as I can, because I happen to know that one of the targets I have comes down here. So I pull out my sledgehammer and take him out. Now here I'm going to switch into his outfit, uh, but first I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that my targets are not coming close. I can see on my map that they are coming close. You see what I'm doing? I'm planning. I'm observing. All right. I'm dedicating myself to a course of action. I know he's on his way down here. I want to get the jump on him, so I need to switch into a police outfit, hide the body, and then be ready to do my point and shoot. Now point and shoot is really cool in this game you hold down tab hit Q and it allows you to go into fast shooting mode excuse me point shooting mode is what it's called choose my target and then execute and I could kill a lot of guys this way it's a really clever way of doing it but that in itself is a phase of play watch this and action ta-da build all build all all right, so from here I'm able to pick up an extra gun. I now have two weapons. All right, I'm evaluating my circumstances. I'm going to go ahead and hide this guy because I don't want him to raise any suspicion, and I'll move on with my quest. So I'll just leave this run while we're talking and summing up. So that's phases of play. Remember, it's all about observation and evaluation, action. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Observation, evaluation, planning, and action. You keep running through that loop constantly. Now, the ways that we do that is through tools. Each one of these is a tool. Each one of them has you know, positives and negatives. The machine gun, for instance, will kill slowly, but good from a distance, has a lot of ammunition. The shotgun, 
great close-up weapon and limited ammunition. All of them are very loud. I have explosives that are obviously very loud. Um, so it's it's all about choosing what kind of tools you're going to have. You do not, under any circumstances, ever want to have a tool that's the obvious one to use. Nothing should be overpowered. There should always be positives and negatives to every tool. Otherwise, there's no choice. There's no player choice at all. Um, if you circumvent any of your options by having one be overpowered over another, um, your player won't make a choice. So they'll be they'll be cutting out that planning phase because why would they bother? They're just going to see a target and shoot it. And that gets very monotonous very quickly. With Hitman, um, there's always a different way to do it. There's always a new way to play. You may have a preference, but you always have the option of changing. That being said, that's your phases of play. My name is Dustin with Tech for Humans. If you like this video, uh, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching.